lost track of. So we're we ready to do this? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm ready. ready. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> hey, internet, we're doing this kind of seat of our pants today. Yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. We should have some, it's a, we should have some beer for this. But. I know. I feel right? like a lot of people are on vacation right now. Yeah, my, apparently my wife it's is. Veterans Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so is my wife and my kids. The BART train I'm, was really I'm the empty. only one in my house working today. Oh. Yeah, it does suck, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's make the best of it. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Ready? Let's do it. In this episode of The Full Nerd, Intel Hearts AMD, Raja Hearts Intel, and your questions answered. Welcome to the Full Nerd episode 35, recorded on November 10th, 2017. I'm Gordon Mong with co-host Brad Charkas. Hello, Internet. That's playing again. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, okay. <laughs> also with us, Elaine Yee. Hey, everybody. And not actually all here is Adam Patrick Murray. Hey, uh, hey, uh, everybody. Hey, uh, I'm going to start calling the fans nerders. So, nerders. Uh, hey, nerders out there. Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> Full nerd fans, you could, you know, Friday I, for sure for you. <laughs> hey, no, I uh, hold on. I do have a legit question, Elena. How are you liking your Xbox One X? Um, I don't know yet because I haven't had a chance to set it up. Oh, you're so excited about the power of the Xbox One X, you haven't even set it up. I've been more excited about the deals that have been coming out, so <laughs> oh. I can talk about that shortly. Money, money, money. Did you just buy it? I mean, uh, so I pre-ordered a Project Scorpio edition Xbox One X, and that arrived on Tuesday, but I left it at the office because I didn't drive into work until today. What is a Project Scorpio edition? That's the very fancy special edition version of it. It's a limited edition. It's for people Mine's who actually love consoles. Numbered. Yeah. Mine's actually numbered. Really? Yeah. Wow. See, that's edition. dedication for everybody who says, like, Elena is like, ooh, you used all... You know, anti-console. This just gives Gordon more ammunition to tell me I'm a dirty console <laughs> I, gamer. Look, I just don't, I, I'm clearly, I, you know, I got two kids. I'm not in touch with the entire world, but I was surprised. Because <laughs> I, people were like all hot at me, but like, it's like all the excitement over the, the Xbox One X is 4K at 30 frames a second. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought it was like, all, is this... 4K 60 frame? Well, I don't... You know, at the beginning of every like, show, we say we're not going to go no, off the rails. No, we're not going to. I'm just saying... And you do it every time, Adam. <laughs> you start it. He always has the exact right question, too. <laughs> oh, it's just like, is it really like... So that, that's what it's all about? It's all about like that 30 frames a second? That's what people are like yeah, all... 1080p oh, 60. Yeah! Get out of the way, PC! We got 4K at 30 frames. Oh, come on. <laughs> Just, uh, let's just all get along and just like get along where you get to make fun of people. No, but just let look, the topic drop. I would not do it if people would say like, "Yeah, you suck, <laughs> PC." Speaking uh, of getting along, oh yeah, see, like, like why right can't we, we be go. like good job, Intel Brad, good job, and Boom. AMD, good man, yes. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> they got out. Yes, they it's... they yeah they start they got out some uh, some bongos. They they started. Uh, <laughs> Singing some songs of getting together and uh, the bombshell news, which was a bombshell, is I mean a bombshell. I uh, yeah, I, super surprising. Yeah, super surprising. I, my jaw literally dropped. Actually, like I was like, what? Like you know, that. I knew often. something was coming. I mean, clearly, because you know, I wrote a story earlier this year saying, you know, there's, uh, you know, because give him credit, you know, Kyle at Hard OCP was saying. You know, there was some big AMD deal in the works with Intel. It didn't quite work out to the scale that I really, um, Kyle was saying it was going to be, you know, I, so it, to me, it wasn't as big a deal. Interestingly, it was a big deal for a lot of people who wouldn't expect it because Intel and AMD hate each other, right? <laughs> but Intel, for people who don't know, they're, they're going to be buying an AMD graphics part and integrating, sort of integrating it with an upcoming mobile chip. And HBM. Yes, so HBM two Intel chip with HBM and a Radeon GPU. Yeah, but I mean, so uh, 
the full details are, well, of course, nobody really knows the full details, but it's going to be used with an upcoming Intel H part, which, you know, uh, is what's in this laptop here, an H part KB Lake, quad core, 45 watts, typically hotter, and they're taking a unknown, I'm going to assume unknown Vega part with HBM2. I wouldn't assume that. I wouldn't assume that. No. No, some of the early leaks are looking like uh, there are some early benchmark leaks, and it looks like the core configuration, if they're accurate, could be Polaris. Who knows? Well, why would you? I mean, that makes kind of more sense to me, just because of how much heat Vic has been throwing off. Yeah, but but I where where I didn't know there was a an HBM2 memory controller in Polaris. Though, what are they doing? Like a, a redesign? Well, that's the thing. This is like a semi custom part for Intel, just like the custom parts that AMD makes for Xbox and Sony PlayStation. So, right, it's possible. Okay, everything is possible, Brad. I assume it's it's not as revolutionary as we think it is. I'm assuming they're. I'm assuming that what they're doing is they're buying a Vega part, probably a Vega 56 level kind of like performance, with an HBM2. Uh, stack eight gigs right and they they integrate that on their really super cool emib stuff who don't know uh, intel talked about it earlier this year it lets them basically connect up a bunch of different chips on this super fast fabric and make little tiny packages and it's going to be you know tiny the, the motherboard in this laptop is probably about this big and the motherboard or the the gpu and cpu package in this upcoming piece could be like super tiny Super tiny. So the thing that interests me about that, just uh, kind of a tangent, is they were saying it would fit into thinner, lighter laptops, right? Got gaming graphics. But when you reduce the board size like that, I get the lighter, but I don't get the thinner because it's still the same thickness as a motherboard. Well, one thing they can do is, you know, you so you don't have the motherboard. If say a typical, you know, a CPU and GPU package is maybe about you know that big, and you shrink it down to this. Ideally, I guess you could add more cooling, right? So you've got more space to add more cooling. If you didn't, if you didn't have, if you didn't have a little tiny package, that cooling would still take up extra space. So you could either make it thinner with the same cooling, or you could, you know, possibly uh, add more cooling so it runs faster than other similarly sized laptops. So uh, we have a, a comment on uh, on YouTube. Lord Wan Fu says uh, it doesn't seem economically feasible to design an HBM controller to be paired with a Polaris part. What do you guys think of that? Depends how much Intel's paying AMD. <laughs> yeah, but I and I uh, I have conspiracy theories. We can get into those later. I think that <laughs> these chips are were asked for by Apple and Apple is basically the only ones who could get Intel and AMD to work together on something like this. Mm. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, that's, that's actually a really good point to bring up because my biggest question after reading all of this news was what would the application of this chip really be like lot, like actually in realistic real world setting, because they're talking about putting them into thin and light laptops like this, but most, most 15 inch laptops that have those H parts are going to be using discrete graphics. We really haven't seen many laptops at all that have an H part right. that don't also have discrete graphics. So I'm not sure why you would want, you know, that much extra firepower for your integrated graphics. Yeah, so, well, I mean, it's not really integrated. It is well, okay, sorry. discrete, right? It's on the package. But it's still not true discrete graphics. Yeah. Well, I mean, the interesting part to me is that it limited. still has the integrated graphics in the Intel chip, too. So it has both graphics. Right, oh, huh. and so that's why I don't think it's as revolutionary uh, as was said earlier this year. The, the reason when I reported on it earlier this year, Kyle was saying, uh, basically, Intel was going to license AMD IP and then dump the entire Intel graphics team. That, of course, still could happen. Um, but this is really, it's really like taking all of the parts in a laptop similar to this is Gigabyte's Aero 15X uh, with an H part and a GeForce GTX 1070 Max Q. Right. Oh, that's 1070? Yeah. So 1070 Max Q. Um, and but you shrink it. Of course, 1070 Max Q is probably beyond what this AMD part is. I'm guessing, but it just makes it a lot smaller. I mean, could you could you really shave that much? Uh, the concept. Uh, if you go to PC World's webpage, you know we're always going to push our own story. But <laughs> if you go to our our page, I think it's the only place that I've seen it. But there is a concept uh, laptop that Mark Hawkman grabbed a shot of, and it shows. Uh, 
spectacularly thin laptop, you know, with, with, uh, you know, discrete graphics. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean it, I, and as far as the conspiracy theory you're talking about, Brad, I really do think, yeah, there is some, like I, if this does not show up in the next MacBook pro 15, I would be surprised because it's mm -hmm. perfect. It's so right up Apple's alley, right? They like miniaturization. They like thinness kind of plays to what they do. Um, they and it seems like they hate NVIDIA ever since Bumpgate. Once all that <laughs> Bumpgate happened and they kind of chucked Apple on the fire. Uh, they haven't seen NVIDIA parts inside of an Apple machine since then. Yeah, so, but you know, NVIDIA time. ended up paying for that. I mean, they pay for everybody. For people who don't know, there, there, were, uh, a, there was a line of notebook GPUs that the solder went bad on, apparently, and it affected everyone, uh, Dell, Apple, blah, blah, everyone who had these things, and you would just be using them, and one day the GPU would just quit, <laughs> and it wasn't coming back. So people don't like that, but of course people don't. Apple has made plenty of screw-ups, as much as their fans pretend nothing ever goes wrong. You've had white bumps show up on the screen. You've had keyboards failing because a piece of dust gets in. They've had just tons and tons of failures, too, so I can't see that, that being the reason for pushing NVIDIA. You know, overboard. Awfully coincidental. <laughs> yeah, but I do. I really, I, in fact, I know somebody in the industry who's just like, God, this is really, this is going to go in the MacBook Pro 15, right? It's like, yeah, I was saying mm -hmm. it's got to be, right? It's totally. I would expect it. I don't know. But, you know, again, it's not that revolutionary because all it really is is instead of a discrete GPU sitting, you know, next to the CPU, um, you have it all in one little tiny chip that's like that big. And with what I think it's probably a it single stack. So an eight gig HBM two stack. It depends on what they want. It could be less. I wouldn't be surprised if it's four for something like this. I would think eight, though. Why go? Why go all that length to do this and then do four gig? And then I, I that's why I don't believe the Polaris thing. I know people are saying it's Polaris. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. think so. I think this is a Vega 56 mobile part. I just don't see. I just don't see it. Uh, also, the uh, the chat uh, is saying the they think the difference between calling it integrated and discrete is the number of compute units. Uh, specifically, Jacob Flores says uh, 24 Polaris C uh, compute units is pretty significant, much more than integrated. Well, it's yep. not performance that that integrated versus discrete is. I think that the formal definition is is not based on performance. No, oh, okay. But it was twenty. It is twenty four CUs, right? For this part, I think they're saying. Uh, that's what the leaks say. They well, we haven't know. officially said any hard details. They haven't told us how many CUs are in it. They haven't told us HBM details. Nothing like that. Well, it's just. And, sorry, I was going to say Jacob also says the the leak benchmarks was uh, four gig HBM two. Yeah, I don't know. That makes sense to me. If if you're targeting 1080p, it depends. It depends. I mean, it still is not integrated, but kind of integrated graphics. They only have so much room and space to put in there. So, right. What? What? How many CUs in a 56 in a Vega 56 core? I oh, don't 56, know right? Isn't that why? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Duh. How many lines of resolution in 1080p? Yeah. So it is Friday. Yeah, it is Friday. Huh, okay. I don't know. I it's I but you know, of course it's crazy because this this is the people never expected this, right? So you guys are shocked, I guess. I Well, I'm shocked at it actually happening. I wasn't since those rumors came around last year, I had faith that the people who were reporting them, because both Kyle and Fudo over at Fudzilla were reporting it. And I'm like, those guys usually know they got people on the inside and they know their stuff. But when it happened, it was still like, wow, there's going to be an Intel CPU with a Radeon GPU. And that's wild. Yeah, I so. think it's one of those things where when you hear it, you don't necessarily think whoever's reporting it, especially in this particular case with the sources being as good as they are, you don't necessarily think that it's erroneous. But, I mean, how many times do you say things like, hey, we should get together sometime, you know, like we should like do that thing <laughs> we keep talking about, and then it never comes to pass, right? I just kind of figured it was one of those things. Yeah. I mean, there was a good so chance it was going to go nowhere, right? Something that interests me is uh, I'm reading Mark's article and it says Intel says that it'll move gaming class graphics down from systems that are 26 millimeters thick to thin and light PCs at 16 and maybe even 11 millimeters thick. Ooh. 11 millimeters <clears throat> is small. That's... But I noticed how they uh, neglected to mention NVIDIA's Max-Q technology there, which is putting GTX like that one right there, GTX 1070 in about 
18 millimeter thick things. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I should have brought in the, um, the Asus uh, Zephyrus, right? Because that thing is just stupidly thin. And that's <laughs> that's really GTX 1075 performance, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. That, that is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where they're going with this, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'll be cool and all this. But I, the other thing, at the, at the other point, I'm, I do wonder, like, so if this is a part they're buying for or they're making for Apple, are, are they going to sell this to Dell and HP or is this just going to? Their terminology in the release, they put up a blog post about it, said devices around the turn of the year, the first quarter or whatever. So the S on there makes me think it'll pop up in more than one. But we'll see. One thing that's interesting to me, it's that uh, AMD is going to supply Intel with graphics drivers for games and stuff, but it'll actually be Intel pushing out the driver package to users. You won't be dealing with AMD directly. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. That's weird because, I mean, if it, yeah. I mean, if it is classically a disc- – I mean, the system sees it as a discrete GPU, then you should be able to just install your own drivers, you would think. Yeah, but that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be the one driver chip package from Intel pushed to you. Oh, God. So. That is bad. I mean, that is like... <laughs> I mean, Intel drivers for games is sort of like... <laughs> I like when people like give Mark- AMD a hard time for like, oh, your drivers are terrible. Yeah, well, they're not as bad as Intel's. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got a fair point. <laughs> well, I will leave you alone now. Because <laughs> they are just like... Yeah. They said they're going to work with the Radeon group to supply day one drivers for new games. So they're aware of that fact, at least it sounds like. Uh, and actually, apparently that's really easy too, right? That's like a, a very easy thing for Intel to do now at this point. Drivers? To, yeah. To, to work contact with, uh, the, the Radeon group. Oh, oh. oh I sent them a segue. <laughs> yeah. So this was a pretty interesting week. So this happened on... Monday, right? Then on Tuesday, Raja Kadori, the head of Radeon for years, quit AMD. He was supposed to be on sabbatical for a few months, but then Tuesday he quit. People were surprised. And then Wednesday, what happened? I asked why your mouth's full of water. Oh, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna talk about this one. Raja basically he says, see ya. He's like he's like, Hey everybody, I'm over at Intel. Like he's like took off his red shirt and put on his blue shirt and he's over there sitting Intel right now. Like, I'm gonna guess. I guess he made some yeah, he's good friends. Intel to head up uh didn't design a high end discrete graphics for a broad range of computing segments. So Intel is kicking off high end discrete graphics division Woo-hoo. that it didn't have before. Big right. big news, big news. Uh, Snipe yeah. over on YouTube uh, wonders what Raja can do with a budget that Intel can provide him. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it really just it really does kind of uh, change things around. I mean, to me, the the bigger thing is like Intel again finally cares about high end graphics, <laughs> right? I mean, they've done I, it a couple times before. I think it's more about the data center and going after NVIDIA for those data center AI machine learning dollars than it is about PCs. But it would be nice if we have a third player in the PC space, too. Yeah. I mean, they didn't specifically say where it's going to go. It's just kind of like it'll end up in data center. It'll end up in in Mm -hmm. client, I'm going to imagine. It'll probably trickle down a client. Although maybe that's the easiest place they can can get get it out, though, Mm -hmm. in PCs. God, it is That's Friday. Cr- I need a beer. <laughs> I can mean to bring a beer in here, man. It's not a lie. But people, pe- people worry about, uh, you know, won't they get sued into oblivion? Because, you know, supposedly in graphics IP, it's very locked down. And it is. But people forget that Intel has been making graphics chips for years themselves. I mean, they make graphics cores. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, the the... the, the the landmines for intellectual property are just the patents. I just like, I don't know how you avoid them. Like between NVIDIA and AMD, who basically bought everybody who went out of business, they probably own 90% of all the IP out there. But what I do kind of wonder is how all of this affects all of the Intel licensing. Like Intel has, li- has a license with NVIDIA that everybody's, you know, mentioned many, many, many times before. Uh, and that is not because I think Intel is like, hey, we're using an NVIDIA graphics core, but it's like, 
we got in a lawsuit and we've agreed to license it from them. We're not, we may not even be using anything they have, but that doesn't mean anything with the, the law of the land. Right. I mean, just because it's a similar concept might mean you could get sued. There's, they just it's have the a, same reason that all the Android developers license Microsoft patents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I kind of wonder how this works because Intel will now like, Clearly, they want to. I I think you're, you're right, Brad. They want to. They they're worried about Nvidia. They want they want to get in the data center. They want to make sure that they don't wake up one day and everybody's buying Nvidia GPUs for data centers and are buying Intel CPUs. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, yep. Jeffrey over on YouTube uh, is asking, wouldn't there be a non compete clause in in <laughs> Russia's? Uh, yeah, like, like it's. I don't think non compete clauses are uh, legal in California. So oh. that's where all this is happening. Oh, so. huh. Yeah. And then I, think <laughs> I didn't know that AMD did release a statement they saying did. we will defend oh, yeah. our, uh, our stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, that I have it right here. I can read it out for everybody. Do it. It is standard practice for all AMD employees to sign an agreement that includes post-employment confidentiality and non-solicitation obligations. Other companies are familiar with this requirement and understand legal obligation to protect and maintain the confidentiality of AMD's information, blah, 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 blah. The industry is well aware that AMD has industry graphics, leading graphics IP, and if necessary, we will vigorously defend it. So it's not non-compete. They're saying you can't go to Intel and talk about AMD's secrets and you can't try to hire AMD people. Right. Yeah. So. so, I mean... Anyone who is going to make a move like this would probably not have done it without some legal counsel, is my guess. So I'm pretty sure that whatever is happening, it's being done very delicately. And I think AMD issued that statement. My take on that statement is just AMD is saying, like, hey, reminder, we yeah. better not see anything that you know about that's confidential to us. Otherwise, we are going to sue. Otherwise, Infinity or fabric. Right. And like, and then otherwise, <laughs> but otherwise, they can't touch any of that. Yeah. I kind of wonder what like Roger's last week was before sabbatical. <laughs> like, hey, what you doing, Roger? I just print stuff out. You want me to do that for you? <laughs> no, no, it's good. I got it. No, no, I can do it for you. Well, I can staple it. No, drives. no, no, it's cool. You know, I just you know gonna be doing some fishing. Just want to print out Google Maps. Yeah, uh, like my kids mm -hmm. want to like, need to uh, print the report. You know, all the paper's gone. You must print like eight hundred pages. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just giving me a hard time. <laughs> So, uh, who who should be more worried about this, Nvidia or AMD? It's bad for both, but Nvidia is the ones who should be worried. I think between this, between the AMD Intel chip, I think. I mean, what if? Sure, it's targeting the data center. I think, like I said, I think this is because they want to get in the data center. But what if this bit with the, as I said, I think Apple making them integrate the AMD chip into the new MacBook Pro makes them go, hey, we should just start doing our own GPUs there too so that we don't have to have radio next time. Mm. Didn't NVIDIA issue a statement already? I thought I saw something about that pop up my news feed, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Just and I uh, think it's throwing shade, it's, right? It's a 1080 Ti Ti. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I think Jensen was throwing shade. Yeah, Jensen it was, yet, uh, it was their quarterly financials. And people were asking them questions, and basically every answer was, you know, we're great, and they're not going to catch up to us, so good luck to them. <laughs> huh, but okay. with much more shade. Yeah. <laughs> as, as only Jensen could do, right? I got to yeah. say that I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it old school here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all the way back for people who remember. There's a couple of failed products, which most people Grandpa just don't Gordon remember. Grandpa Gordon Minute. No, look, go all the way back. And I remember because I, I worked for Boot Magazine at the time and we had run an interview and they were, it was about uh, Intel and i740. They, Intel, Intel, I think they brought, they bought real 3D and Intel was like, oh my God. Like, and we're talking, of course, the 1990s, right? And so in the 1990s, Intel, which of course, you, you think people think Intel's a force now? In the 1990s, Intel was like AT&T or the federal government, an unstoppable <laughs> force. And there, everybody was like, "Oh, this is, it's over for everybody. This is like this is like Intel getting into graphics. There's no way anybody's going to survive, right? It's going to, you know, of course, at the time you had 3D effects, you had uh, Nvidia, you had. I mean, there must have been like six or seven or ten or twelve different graphics players. Intel's like, oh yeah, this is like big. This is it. 
And of course, <laughs> it went nowhere. It absolutely went nowhere at all. Completely just fell on its face, imploded. And they they gave up. They they turned it into essentially into integrated graphics. They said we don't care anymore. And then uh, people who the other one is uh, Project Larrabee, which was mm -hmm. hey we're gonna build we're gonna do discrete graphics card. In fact, they got all the press in the one well, must have been early two thousands that we're gonna we're gonna show you something. We're gonna show you our graphics card. We're going we're coming back into you know high end graphics. We're serious this time. We're showing it to you running. I talked to a couple of OEMs like, yeah, you know, actually in the lab, it's it's competitive or it looks it looks very competitive with, you know, NVIDIA and AMD's products or ATI at the time. And of course, mm -hmm. it blew up and went nowhere. <laughs> so the difference I gotta between say, those and this is that those were for gamers at this time. Now there's big data center money tied up in this, which I think puts a little fire into the seat. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to say, because they really sort of went into denial mode. I think they just they did not want to admit that, you know, that the GPU was actually doing really well in data center as it is. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, but, I'm, between, uh, you know, Epic's launch, which was pretty strong, I think, and NVIDIA just chewing up data center. That's like that's where Intel makes a lot of money. Qualcomm even just launched data center chips earlier this week. So, yeah, they must be sweating right now. I don't know about Qualcomm personally, but <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know how to say his name. S S M Farhad Uzaman uh, over on YouTube says, um, you know, making GPUs is not a one man job. No, you know how much uh, you know R Roger leaving. You know he he wasn't his own team. Are we making a bigger deal of this essentially? I don't think so because I mean clearly this guy was running RTG. He's been in graphics for a long time, and I you know I know Roger. He is super smart. There is a reason Friend why of the show, Roger. everybody talks about Roger when he goes places. Right, he's a mover and a shaker. Um, yeah, it's not one person. It is never just about one person, but it's about a person building a team, sort of seeing where you know what the goal is, and then getting all the pieces and. Uh, Intel does have incredible resources. Also, yep. they, they have their fabs are the envy of the free world, right? They they make the best chips in the world. So you put that and you put the right team in place, you put the right architecture in place, and yeah, who knows where it's going to go. But at the same time, it's not going to turn apart over and we're not going to see like, oh, brand new Intel <laughs> discrete graphics card in 12 months. If they did, people would know. That, that is something worth like, holy smokes, you know, dropping your job up, but it's not going to happen. I think it's overnight. worth remembering, too, that uh, AMD's graphics division was a big mess a few years ago. Remember all the, the jokes and all the, the derision and stuff about AMD software drivers being so bad? That was not very long ago. But then they developed, uh, they created the Radeon Technologies Group and put everything under one house and made Roger the boss of it. And they really turned it around in that little bit of time. Like, people dump on Vega, but the improvement in Radeon Technologies Group since it was formed is pretty massive, I think. And I think we shouldn't forget that that was pretty, you know, sizable difference compared to where we were a few years ago. Well, and, and hopefully he left a culture behind that helps facilitate growth in the future, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it could continue to be a good thing for AMD. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. They're still AMD. <laughs> yeah. One person leaving doesn't mean anything. I mean, they're still a big, they're still AMD, so. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I I do wonder, um, you know, because when he took a sabbatical, people were like, oh, is this because Vega was not what people expected? You know, mm -hmm. did he leave AMD under his own volition? Of course, we're all speculating. We have absolutely no idea. We're just speculating here. But there was a lot of, like, raised eyebrows when he left. And, like, mm -hmm. so I, I do, what, what, what do you think? Do, do you think, was Vega a success? Was it enough to, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's all internal stuff. No idea. I'm not going to speculate too much. But well, I don't think externally, seen... as 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 I... we are, we're we're consumers. We're the ultimate consumers of the technology. I don't think we've seen Vega truly shine yet. I think that Vega has a lot of Ford stuff built into it, which you shouldn't buy today because you don't buy promises for the future today. But I think Vega. I want to see what these MacBooks with Vega in them are like. I want to see stuff like that. You know. I mean, I think there's a lot. These are going to be going to a lot of Apple things. They're going to be different uses for Vega that makes it more interesting than these cards are in the short term. So, mm. uh, uh, Nicholas over on uh, Facebook 
uh, is wondering why AMD hasn't pursued any X NVIDIA talent to head their RTG. I'm sure they have. It's a massive company with thousands of employees. Right. I'm sure there's intermingling. Also, two hundred and twelve dollars shares. I think probably help a little. One bit. thing, <laughs> yeah, right. One thing I find interesting from this whole ordeal, because like reading forums and stuff, a lot of people feel kind of betrayed by the defection. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really interesting. Yeah, it's pretty nuts out there in some of those places. But I think it's really interesting. Like if you think about Nvidia and you think about Intel. You can't say, hey, X person is the head of GeForce. X person is the head of Intel Core CPU. As, mm -hmm. as normal consumers, you or I might be able to. Uh, I think it's really interesting that AMD's marketing the past few years played up the whole Radeon Rebellion stuff and did push Raja and a couple other people out in the spotlight. Hmm. And now it's kind of backfiring, I think. I just find that interesting. You know what I mean? To build it on a personality. Yeah. It's like the, yeah. the Verizon guy, right? Is that, he's at Sprint now? You're yeah. like, what? <laughs> so. Yeah, that's kind of what it's like. That's what I, it's, it's going to be the same if Lisa Sue ever leaves with Ryzen. I oh. think because a lot of people have uh, put a lot on the cult of personality of Lisa Sue as well. And I just think it's an interesting tactic. And I think it's, it's kind of burning them right now. Yeah, but it's, I mean, but it's something you got to sort of do. I mean, it's like T-Mobile, right? When you're playing the underdog and you're playing the scrappy underdog, look at the T-Mobile dude, whatever his name is. I don't John know. Gary. Yeah, okay. But, you know, he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he looks like a, I got to say, is like, I, I like what they do, right? I'm a Verizon user, which, it, you know, is like more of a Verizon prisoner, but it'd be nice <laughs> to like, T-Mobile's like, hey, that's that, that guy's so scrappy. I like what he does. Yeah, I'm not going to use T-Mobile, but. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, though, that people are so impassioned about it that they are giving AMD grief for this move because it means that they, with the whole personality angle, they've managed to earn that level of passion from their fans. So given that they have so much they're up against, I think they kind of need that in their corner. They can't afford to just be another faceless behemoth of a corporation. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I think it's kind of unfair to say, you know, uh, be, betrayal too. I mean, everybody. Oh yeah, I, I was quoting the. Internet. Oh no, I know you're quoting the internet. <laughs> I, I just think, you know, I, what are you going to do, right? It, it's like you, a sports team. You know, when when one player moves to a different team, people get real upset about it sometimes. Right. I mean, we'll never know what 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 spurred the move. You know, is it just? I mean, but you know, maybe it's like the promise of like, hey. We're going to, you know, you couldn't do this. You can't do this with the resources and the funding of AMD. We're going to do this. We're, we are going to, we are going to let you conquer NVIDIA, right? We're going to give yeah. you the resources to beat NVIDIA. Which, and you know, your salary. And the salary too. Well, then maybe, you know, maybe that's a super attractive thing. Like, you know, I mean, I, I mean, if we are speculating, I also think it's also entirely possible that if you've been at the helm of something for a few years and you've been pouring your, you know, whole life and soul into it and you actually do take a real sabbatical and you realize the ship hasn't fallen apart without you at the helm that, oh, maybe I can take other opportunities. Like yeah. my team is so good that they don't have to have me at the helm. And I can go pursue something on a personal level that, you know, is a little new that recharges me. That's a really good point. And then I will also say everybody has a price. <laughs> I have True. a price. Are you going to name it? I'm not saying that if <laughs> Apple said he's a we right need now. a spokesperson for Apple's <laughs> gaming lineup. <laughs> uh, confirmed. I have a price. I would like... That's just the way it is. And then suddenly Gordon's coming Whatever. to the office with an iPhone, a MacBook Pro. Everybody says. the shadow of him dancing in the Apple commercial. Oh, and, and there's nothing better than this Apple uh, laptop that I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> See the Apple logo on this Apple laptop? See? Uh, Apple laptop. Nice. With touch. Uh, snipe over oh, yeah. on uh, YouTube. This says uh, he thinks he, the only critic he can think of Raja is, is maybe Navi, since it was his baby, but, you know. He did yeah. good stuff over there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's interesting because this is really Navi was more of, I mean, I don't think Vega was, Vega was probably already in the works when he sort of took over RTG, right? That's that's kind of what the rumors are, so 
they the, the rumors have always said that Navi will be his full thing, but who knows? I mean, we're not inside there, so. Uh, also, Sai, a uh, friend of the show, Sai on Facebook says, uh, "Hey, the Radeon Rebel is right here. We have survived without Raja. We will survive, or we've survived." Yes. Anyway, you get the idea. It's <laughs> Friday. Yeah. Also, uh, I just got an email from Nvidia, and they are looking for the GeForce Rebel. It'll pay ten <laughs> times more. <laughs> switch the logo. Everybody, I'm just saying, everybody. It doesn't. People get a little too hung up, and this is not. This is not a sports team. And by the way, Kevin Durant plays for the Warriors now. It's just not. <laughs> right? It's not the end of the sore, world. It's a sore spot. True. true. Uh, but you also, know what I hope out of all this? I hope that Intel chips start using FreeSync. That's what I want. <laughs> Push uh, FreeSync. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That See, you know, but nice. the thing is they have, they do support it. They have said they would support it. They just have, it doesn't seem like they, they haven't do. done it. <laughs> I got to say, like, well, who cares? Like, um, what do you really need free sync to run that on your integrated graphics on your your KB Lake part? Your that's your when you need it the most. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, free sync does not work. Point. Does not work at six frames a second. It's just not. It's just not. But I mean, realistically speaking, we've seen those Steam surveys. There are so many people playing on integrated graphics that Brad has a very valid point. Yeah, I know. I that know. might point at that point. You might as well just uh, get an Xbox One X, right? No. Why, Adam? <laughs> Why would you want to derail it again? <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, Foo Barbarian uh, says Gordon's next move will be to go to the Xbox team. Oh, uh, by if, the if way, the price is right. <laughs> Xbox is awesome. It's just the best deal in time. I find when I'm playing on my machine at 60 to 75 or 90 frames a second, I get headaches. <laughs> so it's actually been proven. We have uh, some Microsoft funded scientists to show that 30 frames a second at 4K is just, it really re does reduce eye strain. Because <laughs> too many frames. I, doctor, what's wrong with me? Things look so sharp at these high texture ultra settings on the PC. Well, clearly, if you filter it down some more. <laughs> if you put it through the Xbox filter. See, I I, uh, I could do it. I could do this. I can do this. Perfect. <laughs> and there's his job interview right there. Right. See, perfect. <laughs> Done. Easy. I'm, I'm doing it in... Uh, with, uh, with... Yeah, I totally believe that. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I've lo I'm lost. It is are Friday. We, are we, we segueing need... to the next topic? Because the whole 4K thing is a great thing that I can use. Oh, talk about some deals. Segway. Yeah, well, and, and actually, deals. real quick, uh, now is the time to ask these uh, these guys your questions. Put them in chat. Hey, gals. Uh, uh, yeah, people. Uh, I will put them uh, in a spreadsheet and go through them. Uh, but while you're asking your questions for me, uh, Elena, why don't you take away some deals that you've seen, huh? Right. So Black Friday is no longer a day of the month. It is a, a general state of mind. theme. Yes, a state of mind. <laughs> you just enter it at the <laughs> end of October every year now. And so we're seeing some good deals already trickle out. Um, there is... For more general technology stuff, I have a list of that already started on PCWorld.com. Nice. But I, I saw a couple today that for specific, specifically for the full nerd nerd crew. God, it really is Friday. I can't enunciate. You can call them, just call them the nerders. <laughs> just nerders. You. Right. Yeah. So for the nerders out there, <laughs> I have a couple that I saw that I wanted to call out. Hopefully these are still valid if you are either watching or listening to this podcast tomorrow or whenever you are listening. But, uh, okay, don't laugh. But but there's an FX 8350 um, available for $74 at Amazon right now. That's after a mail-in rebate of $40. So if for some reason you're, you know, you want to build a more modest machine or you're rocking like a 6300 and you want to upgrade your chip, that's an option. I think 75 as, is one of the best deals. As your seen. build uh, article showed, that could be used to deliver Xbox One X style performance when paired with the right graphics card. Perfect. Yep. Uh, for the uh, fans of many, many cores, there's a Threadripper 1900X deal at Amazon. It's 450 right now, which I believe is $100 off the MSRP. That's, that's not bad. It's not bad, but it's, not as, good as that, yeah, it's not as good as that combo <laughs> deal that we saw, though. We saw a combo deal, was it like earlier this week, yeah. where it was the 1950X, the $1,000 part, bundled with a $400 motherboard for $1,000. Right, or, yeah. uh, or seven board, or seven gaming, I think. Yeah, it was like... a nice motherboard. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. combo deal is expired now, so... 
sadly is no longer available for us to drool well, over. That's just, was that like a crazy, like you can get three at this price thing or was it, it was actually available, right? It I was mean, actually available. I mean, I don't see many people going, oh crap, it's in stock. I got to get seven. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Not unless you work for, you know, some <laughs> office that does heavy, heavy encoding or something, <laughs> transcoding stuff. But, um. No, I think it just expired just because I think it was like a new egg bundle, and those are usually just for yep. like a day or two. Okay. What else you got? You got you, that was such good. a good deal. FX part, that, that's impressive. Come on, Wire, blow okay. our socks off here. Uh, sorry, you're going to have to keep them on for now. Uh, the last one I want to mention for now is an RX 560, 4 gigabyte version, $80 after a $20 mail-in rebate at Newegg. And the thing wow. about Newegg is that if you live in the U.S., you can sign up for, uh, what is this, the, um, the Shop PayPal runner? Shop Runner deal, which is where you basically, if you're a PayPal member of any Stripe and variety, you can go to the special link on Shop Runner's site and you get a one year free trial of Shop Runner that basically gives you free two day shipping at Newegg plus free return shipping. And it doesn't cost you anything for this trial. It's like Amazon Prime like. Kind Essentially, but for like a whole other set of retailers. So there's like New Egg and like a bunch of clothing retailers and so on and so forth. That's not bad. I got to say. Yeah, it's not that, bad at all. That ain't bad. 560 for 80 bucks? The That's great. That's version too. Slap that right in the PC and you got a console beater right there for 80 bucks. Yeah. Console matcher at least. Yeah. So uh, the link for Shop Runner, if you're interested, we can we can put in the show right up, but it's... Uh, uh, shoprunner.com slash p slash paypal that's the link for the trial that's cool. can i get in on this for a second yeah I wanna, I wanna. deal time so it's the one i was talking to you about that i was so jazzed about yeah yeah uh, Log logitech's g502 oh, yeah. core is our best rated mouse like if you go to pc world's guide what mouse should you get you should get this mouse it's normally 80 bucks uh, Best Buy is selling it for thirty bucks right what? now. What? Oh wow! What? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, so wait, if you can get that, get that. that. Right yeah. now, I just checked it's showing in-store oh, pickup only, stock? so you oh, might need okay. to be close. But it keeps wavering back and forth between being able to order it online to be an in-store pickup. If yeah, you can yeah. get that, that's a hell of a deal. Wait, what? Yeah. What's the model? It's the uh, G502 Core. There's also Proteus like an, Core. there's like a Proteus Spectrum, I think, that's thirty dollars more. But that one, one has RGBs. Uh, yeah, it has the flashy, flashy. Lights. And that's the pricey one. But uh, if you want, well, that's just forty-five bucks. No, uh, that's, no my, mine's, well, that's mine's says thirty. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. spectrum we're talking oh, about. I know that that's not bad. It's not bad, but if you just want our actual best mouse pick, it's the core oh. version. I see. I swear to God, I think yeah. there is. We really should just have like we should just sit there in our jammies on on uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving. It takes a little while to searching. curate them. So, I mean, if you're interested in the other deals, I did list this mouse deal along with a bunch of other stuff like smart home stuff and some PC components. I think there is a deal for a 1050 Ti for 130. So not nearly as good as this 560 deal, good. but <laughs> it's not bad either. This yeah. yeah. So it's it's listed in our article. If you go to the homepage, it's right there. You don't have to really go digging for it. I gotta say that eighty to hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar GPU range. That it really that services a lot of people who just can't yeah. afford. It's really it's to pretty go out nice. and buy an Xbox uh, One X. I mean, they can't afford it. They can just upgrade I the didn't GPU bring it up for a hundred fifty bucks. Hundred dollars, <laughs> you upgrade. Uh, I, What's I'm, cool is a lot of them don't need uh, PCI power supplies. Some of them do, so you don't don't need extra power connections you can just take them and throw them in whatever yeah. thing nice. you're running even if it wasn't already a gaming rig i nice. think the 1050 ti that i mentioned does probably probably will because it has like one of those like large coolers right? and that so, that yeah. deal is also on the story that you have on pcworld.com yeah i can bring it up if i want we can just mention a co that's maybe not, a couple other things that's not bad 1050 what, what, what's the url i'll put it in the chat <laughs> it's like the home shopping. We should really <laughs> the counter. Put the ca counter thing. Oh, how funny! I, I, I'm just I'll interested. I just like. I really. I'm gonna. Well, of course, it's a bummer. This mouse thing is only Best Buy store only. Not. It, will, was, it went flip back and forth. Like yesterday morning, like uh, what 
around 8 a.m. Pacific, Brad messages me. He's like, oh, darn, it's like out of stock. And I, you know, I offered, I can, we have them in stock here. I can pick one up for you. He's like, no, it's okay. I'll just, I'll see what happens. And then I was checking the prices to see what was still available. Cause I, I like to make sure the article is, you know, up to date every day. So I'll like cross out things that are no longer available. And I, I saw it come up and it had the yellow add to cart button. I messaged Brad again. I was like, hey, if you want it, it's, it's back in stock. I think you should grab it now if you want it. So. so that means if you want it and it's only store pickup now, keep refreshing that every couple hours. Who knows? It might go back. Or you can always and do you what sh- I do and I find relatives or friends in the area and say like, hey, next time I see you, can I just pick that up for you, from you if you're willing to go to the store for me? Uh, e- Thanks. E- even I'm tempted because I'm, I'm a, a Razor Death Adder guy, oh, but right. uh, you know I, I do like the look and, and feel of those uh, of those Logitech mice, so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I want. I said thirty bucks. It's a great. That's a that's a damn good. I'd deal. probably buy like three or four and just. <laughs> no, nah, and the reason why is I <laughs> use, I use them as gifts because every time, my kids are like, "Oh, I got to go to a birthday party, right?" And like, "Oh, what do you want to do for a gift?" <laughs> I, I really gotta <laughs> know gift like card what again? school do your kids go to where everybody's playing on PC. I don't see the thing is I don't California. This is just I. And the thing is I. It's public school. It's private school. It's just that's what. No. Maybe it's a, wrong. Maybe no. it's a Bay Area. Fake news. Fake news. Don't. No, don't. I know so many people who still play on console. I don't know many people at all. Where they're I like, look, look. My I know you wants think wants a, I'm a trolling you when I don't understand. Like I really like when I say when I think people say they prefer playing console games to PC games. I honestly <laughs> believe that, and I think they're trolling me. They think I'm trolling them because I I was like, look. <laughs> Here's uh, filet mignon. He, I, I got a great question. You uh, want a big from uh, Todd Madden? He says, "Can Brad's beard make my baby?" Uh, probably <laughs> physically, but I'm gonna have to pass on you. <laughs> Would it be like a, a beard baby? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but we're not gonna find out because he passed on the yeah. offer. Uh, and, and, <laughs> oh, yeah. what, you know, I, what about that 4K panel thing? You were just oh, freaking out about. Oh yeah, yeah. I totally forgot to mention it. So there, Sweet. I, there's an LG. 4K IPS free sync 27 inch monitor 27 inches available at Newegg right now. I think the deal is valid till like the 13th. It's $300 after the coupon code. Where is this again? Newegg. Damn. And so That's damn good. I don't I don't need it, but I really want it. Buy it. And if I, you don't buy it now, you're going to kick yourself I, or not. I it's IPS. The, I bought the Xbox I One X, and they should be responsible. As just well. return it. Doesn't that hey. work with your Xbox? Yeah, yeah I mean, but she, she didn't open it. You, you, can just, you can just return it, right? You didn't open no. it yet. Was yeah. it this LG, the one that's 329 Yeah. So, yeah, so I just went to Newegg.com, and I searched for a box 4K IPS. Bam, 329 LG 27UD58P-B. Yeah. <laughs> Modern names suck. Yes. It does. <laughs> yeah, that's just terrible. But I, I was con- considering that, and I, it, it, does la- it does last through the weekend, so I have some time to think about yeah, it. Ends on four on on ends on Monday. Yeah, Monday. sale ends on Monday. Do you yeah. do you ever put any of these deals on uh, on your Twitter so people can you know get get notifications? Mm. Always, I think I'll just be dumping these into that article as I find them. Okay. It's just easier if it's all collated. And well, I'm just wondering if it, maybe stuff. even on the the PC World Twitter, if it, you know, like, because sometimes these deals are so quick, you know, like, in, in people might want notifications. You know, maybe that's yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't always put them up because if I think they're going to sell out fast. I yeah. I get too many disappointed sad tweets and it <laughs> just brings my mood down. I saw that the I, other day. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's like it's sold out. I'm like. Yeah, but you Just should, kidding, everybody. <laughs> That's all. I I swear to God, we should because Elena has like you know she has the force. The cheap force is strong in her. <laughs> like that, this she can like find <laughs> deals like out of nowhere. She I can s- just like I can just smell them. It yeah. Is- it's like I fresh back on that goodness. The great ones that she passes to me, I tweet yeah. out. The, well, uh, you know, <sighs> there's like the Shield TV right now. Wait, 170. The new one with the controller. Yeah. They're with the controller? You, yeah, with the controller. Uh, there's like a bunch of wireless Logitech keyboards. So if you have like a home theater PC that you want a wireless keyboard for, there's mm. quite a few mm. models. Mm. I actually ended up picking up the K480 Bluetooth one, which is $20 right now because I hate typing 
like responses on Facebook or whatever to friends, but everyone messages on that now. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not swiping my way through like 500 words to respond to your in- inquiry. Okay, guys. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. There's a few laptops. There's oh, you know that GS uh, 63 VR that we really liked yes, last year, yes, yes. the super yeah. thin one. Yeah, we picked it as the best one. I think. Yeah, last it's year. um. The 256 gigabyte SSD plus 100 or one terabyte hard disk drive version is $1,300 right now on Best Buy. So what's it normally? Uh, that model I think is probably like 15 or 1600. Yeah, I think it hasn't Ooh. it hasn't moved much, but yeah. 1300 is not a bad deal. It's not bad. I mean, it's not like oh my god, but it's not bad. Some phone deals, smart home stuff. Uh, there was storage. I'm not sure if it's still valid for one of them. Let me check. But there's like a, there was a four terabyte portable drive available. For, yeah, it's still available for eighty bucks. Oh, hey, so this four K monitor that you're gonna buy? <laughs> I was just looking. Buy. It's got two HDMI and one Display Port. It looks like that's not terrible. No, huh. no, it's nice. Interesting. You know, it's all you need. Yeah, twenty seven inches. It's not bad. Are you gonna show it to us when you get it? <laughs> I still haven't decided. You know, it's really hard to to love it, even though I want it, because the bezel on it. It's actually thicker than the uh, the Dell 4K all-in-one that I'm still finishing the review for. That one has got <laughs> really nice bezels <laughs> on it. And every time I look at it, I'm like, man, I just I just wish you were a monitor. Like, I don't <laughs> need the rest of the guts because I already have that. <laughs> Says, said what everybody said about Surface Studio. Um, <laughs> the cool thing about this, though, since it's 4K and FreeSync, you should be able to run this with your Xbox. Yeah. Right? Which would be great. And my 290X. Oh, and your 290X. But I'm I'm just saying, because then you get free sync and you get 4K, so 30 frames a second would be okay. <laughs> All right, we have uh, another question. Uh, Time for questions <laughs> yeah, now. Questions, uh, Let's go to the questions. I'll kick it off real quick while Gordon gets the uh, paper. Uh, Ernest White says, uh, guys, where's the VR in the conversations for the upcoming holiday season? Oh, VR Oculus is already, I mean, five months ago, Oculus, if you went to go buy an Oculus set with the full set of Oculus touch controllers, it would have cost you the same 800 bucks as a HTC Vive. Over this summer, the Vive is down to 600 bucks. You can get a full Oculus setup for 400 bucks. Yeah, the price which, already dropped. With uh, modern hard- hardware, I mean, you can run Oculus on easily a sub $500 PC these days. So... I mean, it's looking pretty good. I don't. We'll have to see if they get sales, but I got to imagine they're working pretty close to the profit margins already with that Facebook money. Yeah, probably. Yeah, although I, you know, there was a deal. I don't think it's yeah, it's expired. But this yeah. was. I just want to talk about it because that was. It seemed pretty crazy. Ten seventy Founders Edition and a Vive, eight hundred dollars. You guys see that one? Yeah. And Fallout Four. Oh, and Fallout Four. Yep. Dang. That was the That's beginning of the month. I That's think. Good bundle. Late October. That was good. Because ten seventy still four hundred dollars, right? Yeah. But, you know. It's a really good time of year to buy things. I, I actually <laughs> I actually plan my spending around this. So I try to be minimal for most of the year. And then come like October, I just look at my bank account and I think, hey, it's time. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> to maximize, yeah. Maximize your purchase purchase power, I guess. It's like a treasure hunt. I never know which of the things I want I'm going to get. <laughs> is there <laughs> anything else in VR? I don't know if there is any. Uh, I, I really kind of, I, I wish Vive had hit like $500. Then I would get one for home. But I mean, it's very possible. Vive, I think. Next year, maybe. It is possible. Uh, I think that it has so much more hardware. You need the light stations. You need the all that stuff. Whereas the Oculus is just little like speaker looking things that you put on your desk. I don't know if it'll get much cheaper, but the Vive experience, in my opinion, is hands down better than even Oculus would touch. So, yeah. I mean, it's worth the premium. But 400 bucks for an Oculus Rift setup is amazing. I mean, I can say yeah. that a deal already. It is actually really good. That Oculus, that $400 price point is really good. But Earlier this year, there was an Amazon deal where they were running it. You could get Oculus for 400 bucks plus a $100 Amazon gift card. So be on the lookout for that kind of stuff this holiday season, I would say. Oh, and you know, I I just I want to mention it, although it's phone based, so not going to be gr- oh. the best in the world. But I was oh, actually we very have so many surprised. Questions, Gordon. We have so many questions. We, all right, we got questions. the questions. Len- the Shh. Lenovo. Go Hi. look up the Lenovo Jedi. Who knows whatever you know Disney <laughs> thing. Where, but it was actually for phone based VR. It was. It's okay. It was. It was okay. 
Well, co- versus like basically, you know, kind of snooze master kind of look 360 picture that I took questions. of the Grand Canyon <laughs> what? Huh? at low questions? resolution. Questions? Questions. All questions. right, questions. Here okay. We go. It's well, you want to start with yours? No, you go with go with those guys. They've been waiting for a lot longer. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Because clearly, I uh, <laughs> I've been losing track. These are from an email account. Which account is that? that this they is can from send these the to? full nerd at pcworld.com. Unfortunately, some of them have stacked up because we've been so busy. Uh, also, um, the printer is just still stuck on the default size of paper. It's just your <laughs> yes. PC. Yeah, that never, I, never I print a letter size. All right, this is 2016. I'm sure we read that one. <laughs> uh, this person, uh, Matt Z. Did we talk about this one? God, I've lost track. I can't see it. CLC is basically saying you guys said um, CLCs are great. You think they're better than air yeah, coolers? Yeah, we've, we've, we've answered that. We've answered that. We, one. Okay, forget about it. Somebody else should have. Okay, wait. Well, no, this account. one's new. It's from Matt Brown, dear business owner of PCWorld.com. I'm a certified web analytics professional, holding some exact information for your website. What? Yes, and you can make seventy dollars an hour. What? Okay. Spam. Actually, I think you read that one before, too. Too late. Typer's already been thrown. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Uh, Danny Brugman, I'm the tech director of my church, and I'm building a higher-end custom PC for video rendering, recording, and maybe even encoding. Mm. I'll function somewhat Mm. as an active, and it'll uh, it'll function somewhat as an active, Archive. Ar- archive and editing device. These, these fonts are really tiny on this big sheet of paper. Bird. I'm really tempted to try the new Threadripper CPUs, but they're a little pricey for me. $2,500 max budget, including monitor. Right now, I'm leaning toward building the machine with a Ryzen 7 1800X, a 1080 Ti, 32 gigs of RAM, two, 256 gig SSD, and two hard drives. One terabyte. I feel like the Ti is overkill for video. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The the scaling, the scaling on those high end graphics cards. I uh, I haven't seen a huge return between the 1070 to 1080. So I, I think the TI is overkill. If I, I'd rather take a, a, you know, maybe a 1080 and get bump it bump it up to maybe the low end Threadripper. What do you think? Yeah, I would say yeah. well, maybe hmm. even a 1070. But we're we're looking at twenty five hundred dollars with monitor. So say set aside four hundred for a monitor. Right, yeah, probably. I mean, I still think that budget could ac- accommodate a low end Threadripper. So like a twelve core nineteen twenty X. Yeah, nineteen twenty X. Yeah, I would do the. I, I would probably do because what you're going to be doing the video re- rendering, recording, and all that stuff. You really are going to be running on these PCIe devices. It's probably better to go for that twelve core Threadripper. Yeah, twelve core Threadripper. I would say even 20, step down to a ten seventy. Yeah, twenty five hundred. You could even is, you could even bump up the size of the SSD. Like two hundred. Yeah, I think two fifty six is really is conservative. Small. I would do one terabyte. Although the that's issue with tough. Threadripper though is you also step up to the three hundred plus dollar motherboards. True. Yeah, so, I think I think it would still fit in that budget. I think it would for twenty five hundred. I mean, you would spend like maybe a thousand just on motherboard and the CPU. And then another thousand RAM storage, yeah, video oh. card, and then you still have a little room left over to tweak it. All that said, if you are looking to save money, if it's a church and you'd rather save money, up until the past six months, eight core sixteen threads were like the best that you could get for these in the consumer space. So I don't think he would go wrong with Ryzen seven either. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. yeah. No, it w- it would be fine, but. Yeah, I definitely, unless you're going to be doing gaming, um, I would say the TI, like I agree with Adam, I would say step down a 1070, even consider a 1060, because it really doesn't make a huge difference in CUDA encoding. Um, from what I've seen, I mean, maybe it's changed in a bit, but... Um, I well, actually, it's fine. it's one of my... Play games, too. Yeah, yeah true. Well, yeah. well, one of my favorite features of the new Full Creators update is is having that... Because uh, I always run Task Manager, like I even have it going right now, just to... Uh, I like watching the numbers. Uh, and yeah, ha- having the, the GPU to be able to monitor the GPU easily mm-hmm. is, is nice. So I, I've been looking on en- encodes and stuff, and I, I run both a 1070 at home and a 1080 here, and it, it's not it's not pushing that much, that yeah. much yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, 1060, maybe. Maybe. You're not going to give it that much. I would probably want more cores, and then that gets you into a 1920X. Mm. So, Is a 1920X better th- uh, than a Ryzen 7 for gaming? 
Um, if it assuming probably, he's gonna yeah, maybe do some gaming, I yeah. probably would be a wash. But let's just put it this way: the, the actual stated purpose doesn't say anything about gaming, <laughs> right. so we're just gonna okay. we're just gonna keep it on that level. And if there's mm. gaming happening on the side, well, yeah. you know, you get what you can, right? It'll okay. still do fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll okay. do it'll do fine. I mean, all of it, <laughs> all of it will do fine. So, okay, good. Uh, Boom, done. <laughs> Ryan Davis, hey nerds, I'm in the classic buyer uh, weight it's, scenario. It's nerders now. Can you append that email? Hey nerders, I'm in the classic <laughs> buyer weight scenario. Oh, hmm. I was thinking this is the wrong year, but no, it is correct. GTX 970. Oh, he has a 970. And just upgraded to a 1440p 144 hertz G Sync monitor. Ooh, Obviously, baller. nobody can say exactly when Consumer Volta will be released, but I was hoping you guys and girls could shed some light on upcoming events where NVIDIA is likely to tell us more about it. Thanks, Ryan. Wait. Yeah. CES. Really? That's your prediction? I, would think, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they tease it in some way. Yeah. yeah you know, like a, a blockbuster because they have the they do the CES can notes every year. I wouldn't be surprised if this year they switch it up a little bit and maybe launch with the Titan level one first. Really? But Volta's already out though, right? I mean Volta they're already seeing Volta's those, been so. out in right. the business stuff for months now, so I wouldn't be surprised if at CES they go, hey, you can get a Volta uh, Titan Z for, or they already had that, it's Titan something, <laughs> for $1,500. Here it is. And then a few months later from that, it starts trickling out to the lower things. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I think that's a good assessment, Brad, because I, I think um, CES will be a really big CES for uh, PCs, again, because PC is great. Um because you're going to have AMD Ryzen Mobile there. Yep. Um, you're going to have uh, Intel probably busting out. It sounds like they're going to be busting out their, hey, we got our AMD chip on our, our H, H, uh, H series, 8th uh, gen, whatever you call it, parts, right? I think those are probably coffee links. If you are NVIDIA and you go like, well, how do we possibly Maybe. crap on both NVIDIA and, in, uh, I mean, <laughs> crap on AMD and NVIDIA with the most splash that make will make everybody forget they even exist. <laughs> that would be coming out with a Volta part. The thing that also makes me think that is coming out at the same time is because the NVIDIA G-Sync HDR monitors that were originally announced at the last CES have all been pushed into 2018. Mm. And they go up to 4K at 144 hertz. Ooh. And even today's Titan XP will get you 60, but it won't get you 144. So they could have the Titan next gen Volta and they could say, hey, and here's these G-Sync HDR ones, too, and this will drive it. So welcome to the future. Oh, yes, I like that. That does line up. I like this. That does line up really. So, yeah, so wait till January. Wait till CES. Yeah. Incredible month for PCs. Well, uh, uh, on that same token, uh, Ricardo on YouTube, uh, he's saying he's really tempted to get a 1080 with all the deals, uh, but he's, he's going to try really hard to wait yeah. uh, until Volta. So, Brad... I mean, if things go the way that you think they're going to with the announcement, any announcement of CS being for like the biggest, you know, most splashy mm -hmm. thing they could go for, do you think the next time they would announce like the cut down versions of those cards would be like their what GTC conference in March? Do you think it would wait take that long? Uh I wouldn't be surprised if it was a few months in, three or four months in. I mean, they're in no rush to do it right now. Like sure. I think we discussed last week, uh, thanks to miners, they're selling every chip that they can make with what they got going right now. So, GTC is also typically been confined to professional use only. They yeah, try to keep but it they really have separate. announced new uh, architectures there. Yeah. So I, I and, can see them slipping in like a little corollary. Yep. Sim time. Similarly, GDC is right around the same time. Oh, that's and true. it would make more sense for that. That's true. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But yeah. depending on your monitor, if you're looking for a 1440 monitor, uh, get the GTX 1080. It kicks ass. Okay. And okay. we, yeah, uh, there's no, we're not pushing the family podcast. We've given up. We're not going to get that <laughs> deal. You gave up on the voice, hey! too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna just blow this name. Do it. Uh, it's Suhab Elaha, Elahi, I think. It's better than what I can do. Suhab Elahi. Hello, full nerds, or as Adam would say, nerd nerdlets, nerders, nerders, nerdlets. Is actually what were your different. first rigs you built spec wise, and what do you oh. guys and gals personally use today? Oh, first machine you ever oh, built. Memory lane. Wow. 
Uh, I can't even remember. Mine was in the 386 days, but I don't remember any of the details. I was very young. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Like, I so I I have very fond memories of two machines, and this. <laughs> oh, here we go. The first one is because Elena will like Grandpa this. Gordon. Yeah, I know. No, really. <laughs> <clears throat> so, like, if you know, uh, if the best place, look, if you're looking to score on hardware and you're looking for stuff, and you know, and not just hardware, but anything you want that's sort of like gray markety or fell off the back of a truck, mm-hmm. go to your friends who own restaurants. All restaurant people who own restaurants, I don't know what it is, but everybody goes to restaurants to hawk stuff that they don't want. So my friend is like, hey. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Like, are you talking like American restaurants? Or are we talking like back All alley, Chinese, like Chinatown restaurants? It doesn't matter. Every single, re- well, I'm not talking like what? the stupid San Francisco restaurants where you're paying $500 for a dinner. I'm talking about like a normal restaurant. You go in there. I've never every bought restaurant owner, Applebee's, Gordon. Restaurant owners get <laughs> well, the best. Well, you're missing out on the best deals. They get the Apparently. best hookups. Oh. I, you know, all right, don't believe me. The best. <laughs> TGIF. I, I will say. Restaurants, and I agree. <laughs> you're right. See, Brad knows. He knows. That's where you get the stuff. Now, oh, I don't know where God. it came from, oh, but God. I got one hell of a deal on a Pentium 166. <laughs> it was $200. <laughs> and see, so you're like, what? You pay $200 for a Pentium 166? <laughs> That was a hell of a deal. I mean, it was like a five hundred dollars CPU. No, I'm not saying anything about the deal. I'm just so stuck on the restaurant part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got it because I was at my fresh my friend who owns a restaurant is like, yeah, this dude's he's got some. You want to buy some Pentium chips? And I, actually, the dude had a two hundred. I worked at the he had a two hundred megahertz Pentium. Then. But some other his other friend bought it first, so I could only get the one sixty six. I was very happy with that. Oh man, I don't. If, as far as the video card goes, God, I think it was like some. Fahrenheit 1280 card. I don't know what it was. It was just some ancient old VLB card, I'm thinking. I don't know. I can't remember that. But actually, the one that I do remember all the specs for. No, yep. this is So that's probably like goes. So a Asus Pentium 2. It was built on a P2B. Famous motherboard. Awesome. And a Pentium 2 266. Was that? Yeah. 266 P2 266 that you could just, you know, you could do overclock it to, you know, by throwing a dip switch on the P2B. It was awesome. And the video card was, I think, God, what was it? It was a, it was a Voodoo Two, and I don't remember what the two D card was because nobody cared. <laughs> Some STB card, I think. Oh man. Nobody, anybody else? Uh, I'll go, but uh, it'll reveal me as only a partial nerd, like maybe one quarter. Oh. It's very, very embarrassing, actually. So my first. It was an Xbox One X. Shh, quiet, you. <laughs> So my very first build wasn't until, like, wasn't, let's see, maybe about 12 years ago, 10 years ago? Because uh, up until then, I'd always, like, futzed around in different systems. So, like, my first PC, I guess you could say, was, like, an 8088 <sighs> that my uncle didn't want anymore. So, you know, booting off a floppy drive, that kind of thing. And then, like, a 286 that I opened up and put, new, like, more RAM into and, like, things like that. So I would open up the systems. I would, like, play with it a little bit. But because things are so expensive at the time, like, I think my first Pentium PC was, like, $2,500. And that was on sale because that's how it was back then. I, I was too afraid to go the DIY route because if I, like, messed it up, I wouldn't be able to afford to replace the parts. So I waited till parts came down, and even then I went with a really modest build. It was just more of a, I want a new desktop system, I'm really only going to do basic computing on it, but I actually want to do it myself this time, the whole thing. Uh, Greenbit says that it, it was a Cyrix, hmm? the, the CPU. Which one? The Cyrix. I think it's a Pentium, right? What? I'm not sure. Which system is he talking about? The one you're talking about yeah. right now. It wasn't, no, it was a Pentium I thought about. It's a Pentium box you built? No, wait. No, no, the no. The one 10 or 12 years ago? The one 10 or 12 years ago was an Athlon. X64. Oh, okay. No. So that was when like AMD and Intel were actually going head to head. Yes, but your on. credibility among the AMD fans were up. Oh. I'm holding an Athlon processor from yeah. 2005 right now. That's yeah, right. I think I built mine in like 2006, 2007. <laughs> so like it was really modest. It was like a budget Antec case, you know, the Athlon X64 part, Athlon 64 part, uh, like four gigs of RAM probably because I was doing a hella cheap. 
Oh, hilarious part of this whole build was, you know, so credit card companies keep a profile on you, right? Like, or they have profiles like, okay, so you're about this age, you're this gender, you live in this part of the country. And so they kind of use that to predict what you're going to buy. So I placed an order at Zip Zoom Fly. I placed an order at Newegg. I placed orders at Tiger Direct for all my parts. Oh, my credit they, card got they frozen. Busted you. <laughs> but they froze all my purchases because oh, they thought someone was doing fraudulent activity on my account. I was so no, upset. No, I've just been saving. I was so upset. I was like, no, don't be sexist. Uh, that's funny. That's why I buy all my computer parts at restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, He's before you baby read the back, next baby one, back, I think we back. have about 15 minutes left. Should oh, we oh, yeah. take okay. some from the live crew instead? Uh, I'll, yeah, yes. I'll just say my, my first build was a 460 uh, with a i3. <laughs> I didn't have any money. Uh, I feel you, dude. Yeah. I feel you. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, here's one that, that Gordon will love. Uh, Neba Boy. Uh, is it okay to add a powerful gaming GPU to a 16 core 32 thread Xeon server rack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of how you're going to get it. Into he, he, the... he wishes he sh he could game on it, and they're super cheap these days. Yeah, There's I no just don't. I, I'm just trying to. Th you could do it clearly. I'm just trying to think because you're talking. Yeah, but about you run putting... a Z on at home. Well, I do, but I'm just thinking. Uh, I'm just thinking like, but I run a, a desktop. He's talking about you know, you yeah, know like a, a three U or two U. I'm. You could get it in there. I, <laughs> I guess if you could use a flexible PCI cable, it could work. I mean. But like, but when you're getting to an actual server, it gets a little weird with hardware. I mean, they're they're clearly sort of you know single purpose machines, so it, it can get a little strange. So, all right, uh, we got another one from uh, Mad Max Q. Uh, he has a three year old PC looking to upgrade at some point. Any specific reason to wait three months, six months, one year? How old is his computer again? Three years. He doesn't. No what, specs. Does he, what does he do on it though? The, yeah, the, that's the, a hard. I think really that's really the, yeah. the what's going to determine it. I'm going to go against the crowd, and I think if you need it, like I always say, buy it now. But especially right now, because I think all the major revelations in the PC realm happened in the past year. We had Ryzen, we had Intel adopting more cores. If you buy a PC now, I think whatever comes out in three months or six months isn't going to be substantially better enough to have made the wait worth it. She said he's using it for gaming. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if he really wants to upgrade now, I would, and if he's living in like the states or the UK or somewhere where they are going to have crazy good deals, I would say definitely look for a good deal in this month and just go ahead and upgrade, like what Brad was saying. All right. Otherwise, All right. if I'd... he's happy with the experience, then he can just keep floating along until what? the mood strikes. Like five or six years ago, I saved my money and built a PC specifically on Black Friday, and I saved a third of the price of the yeah, PC. Yeah, it's the best. So now is the time. <laughs> yeah, and I would say do it too. Gaming rig, you know, yeah. really, there really is never, well, there are really bad times, but generally, now's a pretty good Going one. from a three year old, so yeah. we're talking one and a half generation old video card yeah. to something today is worth it. I mean, and last especially year, if you go up a step. Yeah. Last year, I did that article where I think I built a super cheap gaming system for like 350 bucks. Based wow. on Black Friday deals. It's pretty crazy. sweet. Nice. So now's a good time. Uh, Jacob Flores says, uh, Brad feels Intel is hoping to take some of NVIDIA's market share by getting a more robust graphics division. Do you think NVIDIA has any incentive to partner, to partner with AMD's Epic to bolster their product? Uh... I don't know. <laughs> That's not my area of expertise, one. Two, I think it's much more complicated than that when you get up into the server solutions. Uh, I think NVIDIA is looking to sell GPUs for GPU compute tasks, not necessarily pair them up with AMD's Epic processors. <laughs> I think they're just going to look to keep kicking ass and, or kicking butt. Sorry, Mickey. And uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> GPU compute. All right. Uh, well, why don't you read some more, Gordon? I, and I get just have, Gotta I, do it quickly. I guess, okay, we're gonna go quickly. Go. Nvidia likes money. The only thing that Nvidia cares about is Nvidia money. So, <laughs> yeah. okay, uh, Chris Fong, I uh, <laughs> love the full nerd. K U T G W. I'm not sure what that means. Assuming that cryptocurrency <laughs> mining. Oh, okay. Uh, assuming that cryptocurrency mining is a new reality we live in, and there's here to say, what do you what do you consider to be fair pricing for RX 584 gig, RX 580, 8 gig, GTX 1060, 6 gig? Hmm. I would What's be looking to get those these days. I'm not sure when this question's from, but these days I would be looking to get 
something around the two hundred and sixty dollar range. Probably a GTX ten sixty because yeah. uh, A and B prices are still a little bit more inflated than yep. GeForce at this okay. point because they're so much better at mining. So okay, so number three is our our recommendation a GTX ten sixty six gig for two sixty range. Also, PS uh, truck question for Gordon: What's his favorite Star Trek? Deep Space Nine. No question asked. <laughs> what? Deep Space Nine. What? Yes. Uh, this is from. It's real. I put it at number two. Commission what? B 2017. Hi, from Argentina in two weeks. I'll be traveling the States for only 14 days. Oh, sorry. But anyway. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I plan to buy all computer parts uh, since they are way cheaper than back home. Uh, what worries most is GPU. I want a 1070 and the cheapest is a Zotac Mini. It's around 415. Yeah, but there are a few really bad critics of it on Newegg Amazon. So I look for the highest price one rated EVGA FTW 480. My problem is that I will be building my PC back home. So if it's broken, I will find out when it's too late. Should I listen to those few people who have had issues or go for the value for 415? What do you think? I would have split the middle personally. Do we care about, but I think it's really like, the question is, do we care about what people say on Amazon Newegg, the, the uh, um, reviews? I, I actually do take that into account, Newegg more so than Amazon, just because I feel like most of the people who are visiting Newegg tend to be a little more technical, who understand the ins and outs of, or the ups and downs of PC building. Uh, sometimes I feel like with Amazon, you get people who just like, just go, oh, I don't like it, you know, zero stars or one star or whatever. Box head. Corner crushed. <laughs> one star. Yeah. Uh, and the feedback I've seen on Newegg tends to be more in depth, too. They actually outline what the problem was, what they tried to do to fix it, and how it ended up going, if they RMA'd it or whatever. So I do take that into account. I don't necessarily take it as gospel, though, because I also think that people who are happy with their cards don't necessarily write reviews. Yep. I agree with everything she just said. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I would say go for cheap. As long as there's a warranty and it's valid from where you live, it's fine. But Everybody gets bad sure cards. Yeah, I, it's going to be... It's probably going to be astronomically expensive, too, to send it back to the U.S. To yeah, that would stink. That's the problem. That's going to stink. If you're worried about it, spend an extra 10 bucks and get one that doesn't have as many questionable reviews. Yep. Yeah, but Split the middle there there are I mean those reviews that unfortunately are gamed So that is a problem Kai Swanson for a build idea I would like to see you put together the smallest and quietest PC you can that uses an ATX as motherboard I for like next it. build I'm planning to go as compact as possible But I'd like to have enough PCIe slots to add add cards for sound and new Wi-Fi standards, etc Keep a good work and show great question and more than one hour is what he says more than that one, what? He John. says, keep the show longer than an hour. Oh, okay. We'll there we John. go. You hear that, Sweet. John? <laughs> John. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, this is from TD, which he wants to use. Brand new listener podcast. Just discovered your podcast the last couple of weeks. Uh, plan to build an extreme gaming PC, and I've been struggling extreme. with a dis decision on what CPU to pick. My budget is 5K. <laughs> 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 on gaming, PC Gamer website, they recommend i9-7800X. I know that Brad said in episode 25, i9 is not for gaming. I assume that he meant i9 is not the current state of gaming, right? If so, what about the future state of gaming? Will game developers utilize the power of Core i9 for future games such as Cyberpunk 27.7? No. <laughs> oh. My plan is to build a PC that can play ultra high games in 4K. I'm talking about heavy hitter games like Richard 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. Besides, I also want a PC that can play next generation VR at ultra high settings. So, do you think an i9 700X would be the best for the purpose? My concern no. is i9 has a base clock speed of 3 through blah, blah, blah. Okay. And 77, the other option he was saying 7740X. This was in September ish. So, a little, little late, obviously, but. If he's looking for a pure gaming rig, which is what it sounds like, which again, nobody's a pure gamer, as you say, but if he's not looking to do video rendering tasks, if he's not looking to do computational stuff like that, I would 100% recommend the 8700K because that's the top in gaming scores and that's more than enough threads that you're going to need. Yeah, uh, 7700 or 8700K with a little bit of an overclock, a good CLC yeah. on there, um, 1080 Ti, one or two? I know what Brad's going to say. One. 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 I mean, the thing is, then you'll have so much money left over towards the monitor and all this stuff. A and, really nice monitor. Or buying a Volta when they come out at CES, right? There yeah, stash the extra money away and just wait for the next. There you go. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. So I think this is a case where this particular case would be good to wait. <laughs> yeah, and I think we're, in the, we're saying the i9 is a fantastic gaming chip. Frankly, it is faster than... Than Threadripper for gaming tasks, 
but that is the wrong application for what you're doing. Games are just not yep. going to use 10 or 20 threads anytime soon, as, our, as far as I can see. And when that time comes, <laughs> a 10 core will be pretty damn cheap. So just do the six right. core part. Also, the money that you're saving by not building that out now, you can just put towards that future system down yes. the road. Yes. Uh, this is from, oh boy. Um, oh, this is somebody who's directly refuting what we just said. Oh, about games. yeah. So from A Cut Ye says your show is interesting, but contain one wrong information. Most games only use one to two cores. Wrong. Old games use one to two cores. Never played Battlefield One, Mass Effect, Andromeda. The, these use four cores, eight threads. Mass Effect, Andromeda, and Battlefield One use all eight cores, sixteen threads. Well, load screen short. Most new games start from 2016 using four plus cores. Mm. I, I could have swore I heard this when. When DirectX 12 originally launched two years ago. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, most games are still one or two core dependent. Yes, there are more games that are coming out now that will use more cores if you have them available. Agreed. But that's it, still the minority. Yeah. You were talking 99% of PC games, really, you don't need much more than a quad plus HT. And, so, and a quad tiny itself asterisk, HT is little uh, corollary. Think about the kind of games you want to play when you're building your system. Right. And I think my feeling is like, look, we just told the, buy, the person not to buy a Core i9 because you're really sort of wasting the money, the resources. You put it towards what you need. Like, would you go for a Core i5 with a 1070 or a Core i7? We're talking old school, you know, quad cores with a 1060. I would say go for the 1070. It's going to generally give you a better gaming experience. Right. For 5K, I mean, you could get a really freaking nice monitor. Right. Do we have any more questions from live viewers? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Robert Azada. Is Intel going to drop the Iris Pro GPU now that they are adding Radeon? I don't think that's determined yet. I really don't I, know. I've wondered that too, but it's not. Yeah. The, from what we know from this deal, no. But, you know, those whatever, the, who knows? I mean, clearly... We Everything's on the table. We right? haven't seen a new okay. Iris Pro part in a while. So Yeah. Well it's Iris Plus now. Sorry. So. Yes. It's worth keeping in mind too that uh, Intel is looking to boost up graphics and this particular deal for this chip is for like a chip and a part kind of a deal. It's not like they're in close cahoots working together all the time going on. It's semi custom chip just like the Xbox or PlayStation. Yep. Um Same person. Same person. What? And the other one is we are talking about Volta. Uh, what's your take on Volta and next-gen Vega? Should I wait for these cards? Jacob Griffith. That's yeah. old. Yeah. No, we just got that. Yeah, two weeks oh, ago. Oh, did we? Yeah. Almost a month ago. Wait for Vega to actually... Oh, maybe he's talking about uh, OEMs? Yeah, what's your take on Volta and next-gen Vega? Should I wait for these cards? Oh. Next-gen Vega. I would wait for custom cards on this-gen Vega before I even start talking about that. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Get the train ahead of it. Okay. Uh, we'll read this one next time because we already got one of your questions in because I think we have like one minute before Landon has we to have be transported any, away. Do we have any more what, what, One last uh, interesting questions. one. Uh, Ali QW8. Have any of you tried a f 240 hertz monitor? Uh, yeah, we have an Acer 1080p, like a 22-inch, yeah, 240 hertz panel. It's pretty sweet. Um, now, frankly, for my capabilities, my skill levels, no, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> is there is that a G-Sync monitor, I have to wonder? It is G-Sync, and it's made for uh, pro gamers, right? And there really are pro gamers. I know people don't believe it, but and they really can use that high frame rate with G-Sync. So it is it is nice cool. if you're G a pro gamer. The thing is, if you're going for a resolution that high, is the G-Sync monitors have this technology called ultra low motion blur, which basically makes it so you can read the words on the screen as they're scrolling by. Because when you get to refresh rates that high, it can be really difficult to read, actually. So huh. if you're looking at that, I would recommend looking at G-Sync because that's actually a really cool technology. Yeah, and this one has UL U ULMB. Is, yeah. it, is that so you can read people typing? really mean things to you in a game uh, right? <laughs> it's more so like say words scroll across the screen right then they'll look they look janky at super high resolutions it looks weird but if with ultra low motion blur it looks exactly how you'd expect it to and so super I, high I, refresh I, I bet 4k 30 is just the perfect 4k sweet spot 30 that's yeah. why that's yeah. why you need it you don't yeah. need more than 30 <laughs> frames a second all right why don't you take us out okay uh all right look we're right almost on time okay so 
uh, we promise that if you send us more questions, we will answer them in a more timely fashion. Yes, we really we will. will. Yes, yes. Uh, and yes. we will tell you where to, re- to send it to us. So check back in two weeks for your fix of PC Talk on the Full Nerd. For audio listeners, subscribe to us on iTunes. Also leave a review there, please. If you do, I will do more Mickey Mouse impressions. Uh, you can also do Google Play or Stitcher. Send questions and comments to the Full Nerd at PCWorld.com. See, we just read them. Of course, it took a couple months, but we did. We will read them. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon Maung with Brad Charkas. Adios. Eleni. Bye, everyone. And Adam will take us out. See you later, nerders. Look at that. Not bad.